are the founder and CEO of the Emmy-nominated digital media brand, What's Trending. Of course, you have heard of it. And also, she is the host, along with Ryan Mitchell, of Let's Go There, which premieres on the first national LGBTQ station channel, Q. Hello. Okay. How, about, how about that for an intro? It just like goes on and <laughs> It was on. amazing. Thank you. Yeah. You've done some things. You've done some oh, things. Sweet. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. But, you know, I try. I, I try to pay my rent. <laughs> I hear that. Not I hear into, that. Into too yeah. much debt. <laughs> Girl, the debt is real. Well, if the president is in debt. I guess I'm cool to be yeah. in debt too. The pre- it's like all of us, except no, we don't want to. We don't want to make that accessible. All of his other things, but. right, right. 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 Mm-hmm. So, Shira, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you come from? How did you get started? Basically, you're you're on your way to be this media mogul. So, I need to hear about the journey. Well, thank you. Um, I'm happy my mom paid you to say that. <laughs> she did. She did. She's a sponsor. <laughs> Obviously, been talking to my Jewish mom. <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> but I, I, I'm Canadian, I'm a proud Canadian, more now than I ever have before. Right. And I've been here, yeah, like 2004. So it's been a while. At this point, you could say I'm an LA native. And uh, my background, yeah, I always wanted to host and interview people. And I kind of came up at the time before YouTube. I'm kind of aging myself here. Uh, and then I created What's Trending in 2011. It was like the first platform to cover YouTube stars and social media stars before it was cool to do it, like before morning shows and talk mm-hmm. shows were doing it. Mm-hmm. So that's been really cool to, yeah, cool to see. And then um, from there, it was clear to me, and this is just kind of like as if we're dating, like speed dating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we are, it's great. We are, say, I mean, that, you know, we, we are drinking. Food. It is yeah. true. Right. Cheers. We, we started up on MySpace. Well, Zanga before that, but like Ooh, Zanga, okay. where like you would put music out, mm-hmm. you put videos, your top eight. I was saying that for you young birds out there. Yeah, you know. Right? Yeah, we we need to give them a little history lesson. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, so it, it was an interesting time. Like for me, I was intrigued by social media and curious about it because I wasn't getting. Like I, you know, uh, getting weird, but I, and so social media allowed website and people are like, why do you have your website? Like, what are you selling? <laughs> and I said, my body. <laughs> <laughs> are you on OnlyFans.com as well? <laughs> as well, you say it like me. Well, I should be. Make a lot of money. <laughs> right? I'm actually not, but it's becoming pretty like mainstream. It is. Uh, it yeah, is. it's so no. funny. I saw a video on Tik. Yeah, I saw a video on TikTok of a chick who was like, "Oh, I hear that women, or I'm sure anyone, to be honest, make money like putting cream all over their legs." And you see, she like takes out her phone and she starts putting cream all over her legs. And she's like, "Okay." Absolutely. I mean, listen, you got to do what you got to do. That's just it. shaving her legs, <laughs> though. I don't really understand. People have really weird fetishes. Mm-hmm. And, and I watch. I, I'll, I've seen some. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I actually am on Wikifeet. Wikifeed is like the Wikipedia of feet. What, what the hell yes. is this? And actually one person once slid into my DMs and was like, hey, I'll pay you for pictures of your feet. And at the time, I, you know, I, it was a mixture between, I knew I kind of needed money, but I also was like, I'm not going to do this. But then I kind of was like, how much can I get him to pay for this just for fun too? How like much? if I could get him to pay, <laughs> I asked him, I was like, well, I'll do, yeah. I think maybe I was like asking for 500 or a thousand. He's like, yeah, I'm not paying. <laughs> Oh, you know, so I'm like, sorry, I'm not doing it for cheap. You better pay for those toes. Right. Exactly. Or at least come back with the negotiation. Right. Right. I see a lot on on Instagram people who are like, this is for all you feet people out there. And it's just like them lounging in bed or something like that. Mm. And it's like, feet are in. I just don't (laughs) get it. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. So, um, just Google. Yeah, I'm not exactly. Totally. Hey, I I mean, whatever you want to do, I'm into it. Yeah. People like I'll show my feet knowing that there, there are going to be people that will screenshot it and add it to their Instagram. That's a foot fetish Instagram or, uh, you know, the wiki feet, but then I'm like, Hey, might as well celebrate what I have while I'm alive. Yeah. I'm not mad at it. So (laughs) Shira, for what's trending, how did you know that that was a success? Like what was the, the turning point for you when it became 
literally what's trending. <laughs> well, it's, it's been up and down. We've had, it's been a roller coaster ride, but we, we got nominated for an Emmy. Sure and did. That was definitely a pivotal moment. That was mm-hmm. cool. Uh, at the time, you know, we were one of the first to interview different people and celebrities around the social media. So we're having everyone from uh, Lupe Fiasco came on, talked about how he wasn't voting for what was a viral moment at the time. He lost all these it was it wasn't like he just wasn't voting for obama he was all and people yeah. called him out on it yeah, so that yeah. was like a moment where i interviewed someone and everyone picked it up and mm-hmm. i was like oh this is interesting uh we had kendrick lamar on before he blew up that's awesome which I is love, crazy i love kendrick lamar i, I mean him. that's wild <laughs> yeah, we got. I mean, the, the story of that is crazy like i had been publicly fired by cbs news so, so I'm glad you it. brought that up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I bring it up. no, everyone I was like, that. "Don't bring it up! Yeah. Don't bring it up!" No, I don't care. I mean, it's my li- like. If you're gonna live your life being, you know, scared and hiding behind things, and that's like a, a huge burden you're putting on yourself. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. So, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Like, yeah. Oh. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, right, so I obviously, what happened? I mean, it's a, it was a shitty situation all around. I was in a meeting. I meeting to get something in the newsroom. at news. There was a call that came in that Steve Jobs died. I'm running in, and I tell my editor at, at the time, who's a CBS News employee, so she knows the rules around this uh, that you verify. I just heard this, get it out there, tweet it, like figure it out. I'm going into a meeting. A thing, yeah. verify if it was one or just not report about it. She comes back into the meeting and says, oh yeah, I don't think this is real. Like everyone in the newsroom is trying to get it, um, you know, uh, to, you know, get it up, not a, approved, but to see if it's like uh, verified, right? It's right. Yeah. And so I go, okay, let's move on. We're moving on with our day, right? She goes, no, but I already tweeted it. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean you tweeted it? What did you tweet? No. Steve Jobs died, more updates soon. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So- <laughs> the first one around the no. world. The first tweet yeah. in the world. It was like when you when you have a nightmare of your life fall apart before your eyes, this is it. Like when people have dreams or like, oh, I imagine that happening and they wake up, that was my life in that moment where over 24 hours my entire life just fell to the ground like everything I worked hard for built like Times Square billboard I built this company we were about to do a seven deal everything just fall to the ground my life and I'm a pretty uh optimistic person i'm very positive but i I kind of understood how people could be like depressed at the point of suicide (laughs) because everyone uh everyone no one thought i'd get a job again people are questioning my credibility i felt people ran with the story without knowing what was happening and i could have taken advantage of the press at the time that moment because everyone was wanting to do profile pieces new yorker like all this stuff and i just like couldn't get myself to speak on it because I felt so hurt and lost. And because I like had so much integrity connected to my work and what I do that I, I like, I couldn't think of taking advantage of that moment because I felt like so misunderstood in that moment. I was feeling very emotional, very down and like a low. And I couldn't imagine like kind of speaking to that. I wasn't ready yet. So for me, I just hungered on and continued working, you know, and that's when, when we went just to wrap the story, we decided we were going to continue. We were going to shut everything down. It was either that or get someone to save us, you know, or continue. And um, I met with Mark Cuban. This is a bit of a name drop. That weekend when it happened, and they fired us very publicly without telling us. They told us to not talk to the press. I found out through Hollywood Reporter that I was fired sickly. And uh, after crying, yeah, like all day, Mark at the time, and this is like early Shark Tank days, so he wasn't mm. as maybe famous as he is now. Mm, yeah. uh, and before he bought the Dallas Mavs and everything. Mm, but oh, uh, wow. I said, yeah, I said like, listen, I would love to do because he owned a net called HDNet. And I was like, maybe he could do a deal with us and we could recover Monday and be like, fuck you. <laughs> 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 so, um, and then he, he's like, 
I'm going to give you a sister. Like, I'm not going to pay you for this. Like I, we don't even do the, this type of stuff. Yeah. They have this, yeah. Uh, what's his name? They have this other news reporter, like very long, long time journalist um, that I'm blanking on that they, he gave a show to because he loves him and he grew up with him, but he's like, I'm not going to necessarily just give you a deal, but, um, he offered us something, I think, and he said to me, listen, and I said, yeah, who else would? He goes, so you're telling me you can't figure out a way it work? And I was like, I guess I can. <laughs> <laughs> Someone questions your passion. Like, you're like, oh shit, you know, you're right. If you're saying how much you're like, how much you care about something, but yet when shit hits the fan, you can't figure it out. Of course it's hard. But then at, when we just, and um, when we got back, our show coming back, a mo he was supposed to be on, really random. He canceled because of everything. my friend who worked at MySpace at the time. You see, all it comes full circle. Oh, full circle. Yes. I have this guy. Yeah, she, she says, I have this guy. He's up and coming. He's about to blow up. He said he would do the show. So I go, fine. Yeah, great. And his name's Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> so he comes <laughs> into our studio. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and forms Crazy story. Forms high power. It's fucking crazy. Uh, it's just this very emotional, powerful song of like your higher power and just moving forward. And then that was it. We just kept going. That's awesome. That's awesome. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. So, like, at any point during that, did you ever feel like this is it? Like, my career, like you said, you felt like your whole life fell apart. You were like, I'm not going to come back. Did you have any kind of backup plan? Like, what, what did you think of? Like, were you like, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't have time for a backup plan. It was kind of like, <laughs> I just need to keep going. Make it work. Yeah. I mean, all I, yeah, all I knew was doing what I had worked to do, which is why it felt so devastating when everything got just like, just ripped from my, like my, my whole um, foundation just got taken from me or fell apart. I didn't know like w what I do from here. It's interesting it's that, to to that point. And yeah. it's, it's interesting that, you know, you and your team were let go for tweets. Um, and we currently have a resident in chief who can't stop <laughs> tweeting, yeah. but yet he hasn't been fired. <laughs> so I <laughs> would wonder if you would think how that's not fair. I mean, to <laughs> talk about his tweets and some of the things he says and what's going on in the world today. How do you think if you would have said that maybe now with everything that he's doing do you think the situation would have been different maybe i mean there were so many different layers to that situation because we were already going to be moving out of cbs news there was, it was very political internally at that time in terms of them to even be around we were these young mm -hmm. that were doing this crazy internet stuff i roll videos and we uh disrupt so already we were not necessarily like loved by the system yeah. and so yeah. i do think that possibly the same thing would have happened but i do think we would have been able to maybe move forward differently like not yeah. everyone would have been yeah. more scared to while i was like no one would look at me or you know touch me in that way like i had this um you know, I was, I, what's the word? Um, I like this cross, like on me in a way, like yeah. you know, yeah. target on Your Scarlet me. A. Like people just A. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took AP you know, English, I, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fuck, I can barely speak. Uh, but yeah, so that, <laughs> I do think that maybe they would have, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Uh, I do yeah. think they would have maybe done the same thing because they're the, they're also the ones that fired I believe uh, Dan Rather because of something that he did. Like this did. is very serious for good reason and good and good for them. Like mm -hmm. I respect they need to maintain their credibility and all that. I just wish I would have been able to talk to someone and explain what happened. No one asked me to explain anything. It was not, um, you know, like HR didn't look into it. I feel like now it would have been different because I would have said like, this isn't fair and maybe publicly spoken out about it. Saying like, yeah. right. I was fired yeah. when I wasn't the like, one. And I think that people have um, more empathy and compassion for people in that way if they know they're coming from that place, right? Yeah. 
that's yeah. so maybe it would have been different but yeah you're right we have someone who's like a leader who does the craziest stuff and this is like very compared to that well how do you mm -hmm. feel about on that topic cancel culture do you feel that cancel culture has kind of gotten out of control or do you feel like people should have to atone for what they say online or via email or, or what they post like how do you feel about the cancel culture right now i think that people need to take responsibility ability and account for their actions and and there's no tolerance for uh racism or bigotry or sexism or anti-lgbtq plus mm -hmm. anything like mm -hmm. i think we're in a place where we uh, we hopefully know that and then anyone who doesn't know that should you know need to be told that and they're not going to necessarily be celebrated or be given jobs and for that type of behavior right mm -hmm. and so when you're trying to shift behavior society to a just place people need called out for things, right and the reason we are where we are is because they got away with it in the past right you know what i mean so, do i think right like that's that does that get us anywhere i don't i don't know i think we're in the eye of the storm right now and that's yeah. also the issue we are living through history right now so you know it, it it's scary and can be tricky to some people to be all going to be martyrs right now right yeah right like, I, I yeah the, and that's i think scares a lot of people came to where we want to go with without that without um you know violence without um people getting hurt i would hope so yeah you know I will, like we are living through history things happened in the past for right because something needed to change and as MLK said, what riots are the voice of the unheard, right? Yeah. And so I, I think we need to be, um, and so I think that someone who is a horrible person, we should say they should die. Is that the way to get them to learn? Not necessarily. <laughs> like right. in the end, we, we like, you know, like, I don't like, are they gonna learn anything or is they gonna continue to just to hate? Right, right. That's yeah. the show, right. And if we want, we need everyone to get to this side. At the same time, yes, sometimes you could be, we can all be talking to walls. Are we going to move a wall? Not necessarily. You could give someone only so much time and grace and space before you're like, uh, move on. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Well, this has been like very inspirational, Shira. I have to say, not only just like hearing your life's journey of becoming such a successful person in media, but also just like the day-to-day -day advice that you can give to an American citizen, especially that this is a, a voting year with the election coming up. So mm -hmm. thank you for yes. sharing your inspirational words. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. I hope you are and good edit as I like just talked about. No, no. Yes, no. But, but, I don't know how the internet if it's connecting properly, but yeah, we got to be uh, responsible citizens. If we're unhappy about something, we got to do something about it, which includes voting for the right people to represent us, right? Amen. Uh, Amen. Which is, it's more important than ever before. And then I would just do a plug to listen to my daily radio show weekdays on channel Q. Radio. Yeah, please do. I was just about to ask. It's on the first L It's on the, because we got so wrapped up in the what's trending story, which was important. And I'm happy to share any time, but it is the first LGBTQ plus music talk station. And we go there on issues happening today, but in a conversational fun way, we try to make it accessible. They call us like the gay NPR. Wow. <laughs> well, if you need any okay. other gay guests, please yeah, let us do. know. We always do. Please let us know. We have come a in for and when we come out to the West Coast, we might just have to do some in a studio live. We should do something yes, live. Yes, let that us would be know. A lot of fun. We got to COVID off with the little bit tested beforehand, and then we'll figure out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And well, cheer, COVID will be gone by then. Come on, guys. No. <gasps> will it? God willing. Will it? No, I don't know. I was just saying that. Um, Shira, <laughs> tell our listeners where they can find you on social. Shira Lazar, Outwicking, and we are channelq.com slash listen. Yay. Well, thank you so much for um, taking some time to chat with us. We really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to slide into your DMs because I want to ask always, you a lot, yeah, follow, a lot follow more. Follow me and I'll follow yeah. you. And yes. come back here anytime to the table. We would love to have you back. Yes. Oh, thank you for having me and for everything that you're doing. You're all being productive during this time, but all, hopefully also having fun.
trying to, to trying to. Yeah. Well, thank I you, Shira. It. Be safe over there on the West Coast. We'll talk thank to you soon. Thank you. Uh, bye. Okay. Bye. bye.